Let's talk some sports, baby. Take a bye, Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Jones. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby. Staying with the basketball world, ESPN has been passing the lockdown time by going through the top 74 NBA players of all time. The numbers are nod to the league's 74th year. This week, they dropped, their, they dropped their top 10 with some surprises. Not much surprise at number one, however, as Jordan takes the top spot. LeBron follow at two, Kareem at three, and Russell and Magic round out the top five. Six through 10 goes Wilt. Bird, Duncan, Kobe, and finally, round out with Shaq. No doubt this list comes with a little controversy, so let's hear it, Jay. How did, how did ESPN do with their top ten? I think predominantly this is a very good list, and the first thing uh, I went to check is, okay, this is ESPN's top ten. Let's go through, you know, let's look at 11 on down to maybe, you know, 20 perhaps and see if anybody got left out. And I, I don't think anybody got left out. I think this is a fair – assessment of the 10 best players of all time uh, when it's all said and done and some of these other guys their careers are over maybe they'll have a chance to crack it talking about specifically guys like KD and uh, Steph Curry but we'll see we'll see how their career their careers continue to progress but overall this is a solid list I definitely agree with Michael Jordan and LeBron being one and two and after that it's just a matter of you know, just moving some guys around. I've got Bill Russell third. I think when we think about Michael Jordan and giving him credit for the six for six, uh, Bill Russell, I mean, the, really the ultimate winner in, in NBA history. I mean, this guy won 11 championships in 13 years. At one point, I think they won nine straight. I mean, even during that time frame with, you know, less teams, that's, that's still 11. 11 still 11. It's, I think it's in, in some ways, it's, it's unthinkable that you could win that many times. So yeah. especially when you take into consideration Wilt Chamberlain was around at the same time and Bill Russell was able to do what he was, he was able to do. Uh, speaking of Wilt, I got him at five, but I got Kareem, Abdul, uh, Kareem at uh, number four, uh, all-time leading score in the NBA. And you made the point uh, earlier, I think it's a valid one. And we'll see if, this, uh, if his scoring, if his uh, all-time scoring record continues to stand with the, evolu- the uh, three-point shooting increases that we continue to see with the, the, the increase of pace. If one day that somebody can break this record uh, from the guard position, I think it's something that could be reasonable uh, moving forward. But uh, I got Wilt Chamberlain at number five. And then moving on down six through ten, I got I got Kobe at number six. I think he's the closest thing we've seen to the best player of all time. Got five, He's got five championships, played 20 seasons in L.A. Uh, you know, the competitive mindset he had, that drive, that mama mentality, we talk about it. And I, th- I, I think he's the – greatest Laker of all time when you talk about playing an entire career there. And then I got Magic right behind him at seven, another five championships, probably the best point guard that we've ever seen in the NBA. And Larry Bird right along with him at eight. Uh, Those guys dominated that stretch in the 80s and had some epic matchups. And then man, you talk about what a what a competitive group of guys in here at the center position when Shaq is your fourth best center. But still the most dominant force we've seen in the modern NBA and really, I mean, referees, referees kind of changed. They had to alter the way they called games to keep games moving. Cause there was a foul. Every play against this guy would have been a lot more missed free throws too, probably, but you know, and then, and then Tim Duncan, the big fundamental, probably the least amount of splash, among any of these guys. And that's probably why I've got him so low, but I mean, he's, he's a top 10 player and, and it's, it's a little bit, it's not a little non-competitive among these, these guys because of the positions, but he's best power forward of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, I didn't have a huge problem with the top 10 that the ESPN rolled out, but like you said, my list is a little different and it goes as such, you know, number one, I got Jordan. Before I roll into it, I did want to say, listen, when I made this list, this is how I thought about it. I said, I thought to myself, what did, this play, what did these players do for the NBA? Because if you're going to say top 10 players of all time, top, top NBA players of all time, 
then they had to do something for the NBA. I mean, because if that was the case, if you're going to give me some bull crap ring argument, let's go ahead and bring Robert Ori in here and, and some, some other guy that, that, you know, rode coattails for their whole career. Not saying, you know, they're bombs, but we're talking about guys that changed the game. So with that said, when with Michael Jordan? Self-explanatory. The guy took the NBA to the next level. He was literally the most popular guy in the world in the late 80s and during most of the 90s. It's not even close. He, I mean, with the shoes, with the clothes, with the commercials, the movies, you name it. The reason players like LeBron and et cetera, et cetera, can do what they do today is because Jordan, he laid that foundation. And, and listen, we know he was an assassin on the court. It's nothing about it. Hey, hey, Jordan, who going to take the last shot? <laughs> who you take? Me, of course. So we know what he brings. We know what he's about. Number two, LeBron. Listen, some people say LeBron the GOAT already. He might, I think he, he has a little more work to do. But when it comes to off the court, LeBron has taken the NBA to the next level. When it comes to dealing with this social media era that, era that we're in right now, when, when you get out of the bed in the morning, it's probably a camera in your, in your window trying to catch what you're doing because you have zero privacy. Everything is public domain that they think. So LeBron has carried that torch that LeBron, he laid it down, and LeBron has been the guy to carry it on. Now, I'm not saying... He was like the carbon copy of Jordan because that would be a bold-faced lie. I'm going to talk about a, a guy that meets that criteria. But we know that when it, comes to the game out, when it comes to the game outside of the game, LeBron has been bar none. He's been a true ambassador of today's game, and it is what it is. Number three, Magic Johnson. Now, I will say this with Magic Johnson. He, he's going to go down as probably the best point guard, even though we know in his first year, he did play the center position that just show you his greatness. But I think him and Larry Bird, which are going to come later in my list, they're connected at the hip a little bit. Why? Because we know when those guys came into the league, the NBA wasn't all that popular, if you even want to call it popular at the time. And these two guys, they saved the game of the NBA. They did. Whether you want to pin it black versus white, uh, you know, this part of the United States versus this part of the United States, however you want to pin it, you, we, owe, we owe basketball still staying around for Jordan to come in to uh, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. It's just the bottom line. Those matchups they had in the 80s kept people intrigued, kept them hanging around. And like I said, Magic would go down as probably the best point guard. You heard it from Michael Jordan in the documentary. Even though you, like he's very versatile, but he's probably going to go down as the best point guard in the game. Then, Kareem, uh, listen, you, we talked about this before the show. Kareem played from 1969 to 1989, 20 years. He is number one in scoring history. Folks, we're in year 2020. Do you understand how much basketball they may play? During this time, Michael Jordan that came through, Magic that came through, Kobe that came through, LeBron that came through, Kevin Durant still playing. So all these players that came through, and Kareem is still number one. You got to understand the magnitude of that. If you don't, just stop, stop, don't even watch any more NBA. That is incredible when you think about it. That is a lot of scoring. They call him the captain. Um, I, I just he, – he created the sky hook. I mean, you still see players now that do the sky hook. That was Kareem move. He made that popular. He made that move what it was. Uh, and listen, I, I just got to give kudos to a guy that's leading the NBA in all-time scoring and that stopped playing in 1989. He stopped playing before Michael Jordan won his first NBA title, and he's still leading the NBA in all-time scoring. Incredible. Number five came in, Larry Bird. Like I told you about Magic, Larry Bird probably one of the best three-point shooters. Um, I think it, his three-point shooting gets underrated. His assist gets underrated because of the time that he played. But listen, Larry Bird was a straight assassin. Like I said, him and Magic in tandem, they saved the NBA. Those uh, Boston Celtics versus uh, L.A. Laker games is what kept the NBA afloat. During you know during the eight the seventies and the eighties and all that, 
So these guys got, you know, on the older end, and then Al Jordan came and gone. He, you know, he got them out of there. It was what it was. But by that time, these two gentlemen had already made their mark. So I had Larry Bird at five. And then I, the reason I got Kobe at six, listen, I'm not trying to under, you know, undermine anything Kobe accomplished in his NBA career. Five-time champ. Listen, hell of a competitor. But my problem with Kobe is this. Until you can give me something where Kobe changed the landscape of the NBA on his own, I'm, I'm sorry. A lot of what Kobe did, he was a carbon copy of Mike. So because he was a carbon copy of Mike, I'm going to say he was the second best player. No, he was, a, he was a hell of a player. I love Kobe. Kobe one of my favorite all-time players. But I've seen everything he'd done before. It was just like, it was like Mike. The only difference is, is he did have to go over that. He had to come over the, adver- the adversity of Shaq leaving. He had to rebuild the team around him. And he got two more titles out of it. But at the end of the day, he was, he was a better, you know what I'm saying? He was a younger version of Mike. And we, as we've seen in the documentary, we've seen why. They talked a lot. They was best friends. It was the, the you know, big brother, little brother relationship. So no faults of that. That's not bad. But I'm just saying, like, he, I didn't see where he changed the NBA when he played. Tim Duncan, the only power forward in the top ten. And by most accounts, the best power forward to ever play this game. Now, I didn't say he was a, a sighting guy to go out with, but he did what he did on the court. He was about as bland as uh, uncooked rice. We know this. But he was a winner. Got drafted in 1997, and the Spurs ain't been a losing team since. So that, has a, that says a lot about Tim Duggan. And the fact, you, you said this earlier, Jay, we got four centers on this list. But Tim Duncan is the only power forward in the top ten. So that says a lot. When you see something like that, because guys that's a lot more experienced than me and you are saying, this dude was good. He was the, cr- the creme de la creme when it came to power forward. Best power forward all time. Number eight, I had Shaq. You said it. I feel like if you're a player and they create rules just because of you, that's impacting the game. We have Hacker Shaq to this day because of Shaq. Bar none. That is a legitimate rule. That is a legitimate strategy that teams use to try to win the game at all costs because of Shaq. That puts you in the top 10 pretty much because they making rules for you. It is what it is. And speaking of making rules, Will Chainlin coming in at, at number nine. Oh, yeah, three seconds in the key? Yeah, go ahead and give that to Will Chainlin because I guess he was doing his day he was pitching tents in the paint, and there wasn't nothing people was doing about it. Um, my only problem with Will Chamberlain is this. Pro- he possibly deserves to be high when I look at his career stats. They are gaudy. But can somebody give me some rolling tape for Will Chamberlain? Can somebody give me something where he's actually balling? I don't want to see a picture of him holding up something. I don't want to see a picture of him with, like, eight women. I want to see him actually balling on the court because that's my problem. Him and, and the guy I got coming in at 10, Bill Russell, like you said, the ultimate winner, they played around the same time. And you brought this point up earlier. The reason Wilt don't got more rings is because of Bill Russell. Well, why I can see Bill Russell playing, I can see tape of him playing, but I can't see tape of Wilt playing. What is this? Like, was it copyright infringement to record Wilt playing? I didn't, what, what's going on? So you got Bill Russell, the ultimate winner, 11 out of 13. And Bill Russell, right, he's significant to me because here's a, 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 you know, a young African-American guy that was coming into the league, you know, in the 50s. And you, you best believe it wasn't welcome with open arms at no means. Was they just lined up and say, come on in, Bill, you're one of the guys. I'm pretty sure it was pretty rough. If you remember... Back when um, they and they showed this in like the I want to say the O.J. Simpson documentary, it was like him and um, Jim Brown and Kareem and Muhammad Ali. They you know they was they was building a coalition to, to you know try to help the African American athlete because they was getting treated like third world citizens at the time. He was part of that, so he was and he was also the first player to you know become you know a player coach. He was legitimately a coach, but he still wore the uniform. 
and that opened the door for guys that do that now. The Haslam's, you know, he's now he's doing the same thing down in Miami right now. He on the team as a player, but he's pretty much a coach. He's just soaking in the knowledge. So, you know, Bill Russell brought that in. And um it, between him and Ray Allback, you know, they, they did what they did. So, yeah, man, um, that's my top ten. Like I said, Jordan, LeBron, Magic, Kareem, Bird, Kobe, Duncan, Shaq, Wilt, and, and Russell at the end.